Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the August 27th, 2024 school board meeting to order. Summersworth School Board meeting. Um, can I have a roll call, please? Katie? Maggie Larson. Here. Carrie Clark. Here. Sarah O'Brien Hart. Here. Crystal D. St. Croix. Here. Marsha Brown. Here. Barbara Wentworth. Here. Bridget Jamison. Here. Gemma Soldati. Here. Okay. Please join me in the pledge. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Uh, I'd like to open up the floor for comments by visitors. Any comments by visitors this evening, please approach the podium. Um, state your name and address. We'd be happy to hear you. Welcome. Yes. My, um, my name is Richard Brooks. I live at 18 Linden Street, Ward 1. Um, I've, maybe some of you people know me, maybe you don't. Um, I've used to come up and complain, but I've decided to get involved instead, and I've sat on numerous boards and committees, still do. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is the city notices. Our city could do far better. They do meet the minimum 24-hour requirement, usually, that they, is required, and then they post a notice in the city hall entry and the library entry, post it on the website, and probably on channel 22. There's nothing that reaches out two people like a text or email alert choice for that. Um, this is something that's really bothered me. I've collected signatures for a petition in the past. I never put it forward for a longer story that I'm not going to get into. But I'm collecting signatures for another petition such as that. Um, the city has improved recently by extending those notices out a little bit better on the website. But it still doesn't do anything to reach out and grab people. Um, obviously, I'd like to thank all of you for doing what you do, elect, you know, being elected to the position and your service to the city as well. But I'm also disappointed that there was a recent summer school board retreat on July 24th and August 1st. There was no agenda posted, supposedly, through the rumors. I heard there was a goal setting session. Who attended? What was discussed? Was the public allowed to attend? Were they allowed to speak? Were they allowed to put any input in? All this stuff I wonder. I didn't see any mention of minutes. Are there any minutes to that? I have serious concerns about that. So when stuff like that happens, I believe it erodes the public's trust in the board that doesn't be transparent. So please do better. And also with agendas, please skip the letter designations. Put up why or what the title is, because people can't get involved if they don't know what it's about simple letter designations it's just not the same language I speak I don't know what it is and probably many others don't either um, maybe this would encourage others to get involved discuss have share their input what their concerns are but they have to know what is being discussed thank you thank you all right any other comments by visitors this evening All right, seeing none, uh, going to agenda number, uh, item number two, any comments by board members? You'll have another um, opportunity at the end of the board meeting as well. Anybody? Oh. Can I yes. make, make one? Yes. Um, and I just wanted to initially respond to the, the notice, and I would love to hear more ideas, because this is notice, public notice has historically been you know, at least for the the court systems, you know, legal notice, and we know all the know that that is really falling by the wayside. And so we're not the only ones struggling with what's the best notice. And I, I I love you know more ideas because it not only affects my my you know work my day job, um, but it affects us. So I, I thank Richard for uh, bringing that notice issue back to our forefront. And policy committee will will take a look at that. But would love uh, input from people if they have other ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I also, in response to Mr. Brooks' comment, I feel uh, similarly as a new member of the policy board, I understand it's hard sometimes to know what uh, things are referring to. So I definitely, as a member of that committee, am open to kind of looking at how do we best communicate to the public some very like intense jargon um, 
that is necessary in the policy making, but in communicating to um, invite the community in can sometimes we we get a sort of drop off. Um, so I'm very open to that. And I'll discuss this in the uh, Eyes on 30 committee, but I wish Mr. Brooks had stayed for a response because that is something in general about the way that the city uh, ha having no communication staff person, I'm very, I'm a big proponent of how does a community communicate and how, whether it's digitally, through press, through all sorts of means, let our residents know both what's going on, but also when we need their help and when we need their input. And so I'm very open to that conversation and um, furthering that issue. Okay, great, all right, thank you, all right. Moving along to our consent calendar, um, there was an addition of our committee lists that we all have. Um, so I'd like to add the uh, subcommittee lists to item number 3.6. Um, if that's all right with everyone, I don't know if we need it. We don't need a motion to kind of add that. We just had it, um, you know, we've all received it. So do I have a motion to adopt the consent calendar as presented? I'll make a motion to adopt the consent to cal calendar as presented in our packet. Second. Right. Any discussion about any item? There was about 240 pages, but um, it was there any, uh, it was all in there, the, the handbooks? No, okay. All in favor say aye. aye. Okay, the consent calendar is adopted. All right, moving to our reports. Um, it's gonna be a quick one. There's no student re representatives report. They'll, they'll start in September. We'll move to our superintendent report, 4.2. Um, welcome Superintendent Shea. Thank you. Um, and just so folks are aware, uh, in transitioning, I'm not always crystal clear on what's new and what was already established last year, but we'll have four high school reps and they'll be here on the second meeting of each month. Um, and as was suggested earlier, they're going to focus not just on high school and a little bit of middle school, but they're going to do their best to report on things that are happening across the district. Um, and it'll be a team given that they're busy, very, pretty busy, and it seems like a simple commitment, but it's uh, the work that goes into it and being here um, is complicated. Um, so just a heads up about that. Uh, my report, we have uh, a little over a thousand kindergarten through ninth graders showing up for the first day of school tomorrow. I know we have some school board members that plan to be out and about um, uh, 7.15 to 7.30ish for the middle school and the high school. Uh, Maplewood, 8.20, 8.30ish. Devin, is that about the right? Uh, 8.10 to 8.20. Um, and then Idlehurst and the 8.45 to 9ish to be there to greet camp if you can get out. Um, That'd be terrific. And then we have 10th, 11th, and 12th graders showing up on Thursday. And the pre-K uh, folks start on Tuesday of next week, uh, bringing us to about a little under 1,400 students overall when, we, when we're all there on uh, Tuesday. Staffing at this point, we have, still have several paraeducator positions that are open. Um, it's not too unusual, but we're trying to fill those. We have a special education case manager position that we don't anticipate filling at this time of year. And we always need substitutes, 692-4450, um, if you would like to give back to the community in that way and earn about $100 a day. Um, I think a lot of folks have seen it in the news uh, that First Student and the Teamsters are at odds right now, particularly over a pension plan. Um, they have talks set for September 10th and September 11th. We've been in regular communication a bit with the Teamsters and uh, particularly with First Student. We are hopeful that there will not be a strike. Um, if there is, it would be sometime mid-September, we would expect. Um, and we don't know for certain that we lose our drivers in the worst case scenario for students doing um, all that they can. But we're gonna look aggressively at what we can do as options within the community. Um, it's really kind of a school slash community effort to do our best um, if we are faced with the transportation strike. But we'll keep everybody updated and we'll reach out to families um, when we know more. Um, but I think most folks have seen the, the article and the news that that's happening. Um, you asked about before care and after care um, at Idlehurst and Maplewood provided by the YMCA with the SYC program ending last year. We have about 31 students last count at Idlehurst in before care. Um, we have about 10 students signed up for Maplewood before care. 
which is complicated for the Y. The 15 was kind of their critical number, so they're looking at making that work um, either by offering it at the Y once it's finished or at Idlehurst in the meantime, um, but they're working that out. And we have about 44 students from Maplewood and Idlehurst in after-school care, which is at Idlehurst, run by the YMCA. Um, we did lose the uh, middle school uh, SYC piece uh, with this transition that is not picked up by the YMCA. Um, Kat and I, among others, have met with Jim and Jen to kind of talk about strategizing what we can do at the middle school. Um, we had a, a low side, five to 10 students participating in educational enrichment and things like robotics on the high side, 20, 30, 40, and with the right kind of robust program, I think we could probably be closer to those high numbers um, regularly, um, but we're not there um, right now. Um, tech upgrade project um, update. Um, this is hard to do quickly, but I'll do it quickly, and uh, you guys can jump in with questions if you got. On on July 8th, the school board authorized up to $300,000 in spending from our end of year balance. Um, we have we're looking at closing in. I, I checked with uh, Katie this morning. We're at 299,000 and change in terms of spending and pending spending. And that's not because we're looking to spend every penny of it. It's because we know we're going to be spending more than that. So we're utilizing these funds that are available um, to tackle the first phase of what is a two-phase technical um, technology upgrade project. Um, not my area of expertise, but um, this is what's been completed so far. They began work in July. They are continuing work right now. Um, we had hoped to have absolutely everything done before the school year started. Um, we knew that might be unrealistic. Um, I think it was Marsha that asked about, you, you know, uh, do we expect there to be glitches and problems? We don't expect there to be them, but we know that that's inevitable um, as we dive into this. But for the most part, they've done an amazing uh, amount of work. Um, a aging single firewall has been replaced with two new firewalls. All core network equipment was replaced in July and August. Um, significant data center work um, has been done and is ongoing. All the servers in the district have been replaced, um, older ones with newer ones, licensed, warranty, set up for regular patches and updates. We've moved from Microsoft Outlook email, um, migrated the entire district over uh, to Google and Gmail for host reasons, keeping some Microsoft licensing for administrators and others that are using um, Word and Excel spreadsheets and such. We've moved the whole district to a better password system, 16 characters, multiple characters, two-factor authentication. Um, we're not there yet, but the system's in place, and we hope we have all of our faculty and staff quickly up to speed. Um, that was part of what happened in the first two teacher workshop days, making sure we're in good shape on all that. Um, well over 1,000 inactive accounts have been shut down when you think about parents and past staff and everybody else um, in the district, and, that, and that's been a lot of work, and it hasn't always gone smoothly because that's just the nature of it, but um, NewView's done a terrific job and I think we're in pretty good shape. We have 42 new staff laptops and 66 that have been upgraded with parts. That's 108 that are in good working condition um, right now. And the goals of all this, again, we're about halfway there. There's going to be more work going on in June, July, August, the following summer, um, less expensive than the first wave and we'll get E-rate discounts um, on significant portions of the second wave. Um, but basically much, much more secure, um, faster, more powerful systems, greater quality, proper licensing on everything, more reliable, better in internet, everything that you'd kind of expect. Um, and I know it was asked in July if this is, you know, the Cadillac of everything. We're, you know, we're not top line, but we're good quality, you know, making sure we've got everything in place. Um, so that's the update on, on tech. Um, yes. Wi-Fi. Just the... Do we have Wi-Fi? Yes. Is it, work is it working? <laughs> I can't vouch for where we are in each of the schools. We've, we've lost network and Wi-Fi at various times intentionally in July and August mm -hmm. and I'm, because of all the updates. And that would be a better question. Um, I don't know if any of the principals or assistant principals, anybody in the schools, if we're feeling good where Wi-Fi is right now. Um, I know we're going to have, we try, NewView's done a good job, say in advance, we expect there to be issues. but. Um, okay. When you have all the students back and we're, we're using everything, uh, you know, a week from now, um, hopefully we'll feel pretty good about it. Um, good. Any other um, questions, quick ones? Okay. Um, Kat's going to talk a little bit later on about Title IX, but just, uh, you know, the, there was a, the federal law changed um, 
over the summer, and it's just important to be aware of that. Um, it's going to go through policy and be properly updated. There's over half the states in the United States actually filed injunctions against the new Title IX because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, I don't know, it's stricter is the right language or depending on how you look at it, but uh, the New Hampshire is not among them, um, although uh, to, for some folks they might have been surprised. So the, the cattle fill you in a little bit on all that. Um, and the other piece of legislation that's got a lot of attention, just as a quick update, um, this is in New Hampshire Department of Education. This is New Hampshire state law. Um, in its shortest f form, it's legislation that prohibits transgender girls from playing interscholastic girls' sports. Um, there was an injunction filed a few weeks ago just on the behalf of one individual and another injunction that's in the works. Um, just so folks are aware, at this point in time, we do not have a transgender girl seeking to play girls' competitive sports um, in Summersworth. So we're watching that one, and we can talk more about that as makes sense and think about our own board policy implications for what may stand as a state law or what may get knocked down as a state law. Um, I believe Tennessee or somewhere this is headed to the Supreme Court, so it's very similar. There is not a, this law does not affect transgender boys playing boy sports. It only goes in the other direction. Um, um, but I wanted folks to be aware of that, um, that it's out there and that uh, it, is not in a, it does not affect any of our students at this time. Um, good? Yeah. Um, what we talked about in July and what I thought we'd do right now is uh, just make sure you had the whole district uh, leadership team standing before you, knew who everybody was, um, and I thought it'd be nice for the community at home and just as a matter of record um, to present the entire group to you <laughs> so you know who you've got and uh, and uh, which is pretty exciting and uh, I'm just going to ask everybody to come up and stand um, around the uh, podium I'll, I'll call you up or however you want to do it you come up in an ish but make sure everybody knows who everybody is and I want to start with the I want to start with the veterans at the school level um, Idlehurst Elementary School, pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, Liza Coco, I think everybody, and Kate Gove, principal and assistant principal, um, Maplewood Elementary, grades three, four, and five, Devin McNelly, principal, Max Ferguson, assistant principal, uh, Summersworth Middle School, grades six, seven, and eight, Jim Lampron, um, principal, and Jen Spector, assistant principal, uh, Summersworth High School, grades 9 through 12, Chris Tebow, Principal Mike Bluen, assist Assistant Principal, our Director of our Career Technical Center, Caitlin Carrington, Steve Hodgson, who's our longtime High School Athletic Director, is now the District's Athletic Director, uh, Middle School and High School, Jay Lilly is our Facilities Director, um, Katie Krause is our business, administra business Administrator, and I want to stop there for one second and say these folks are all returning. Jay's going into his third year. That's the newest among this team. Everybody's, and Mike, you are, this is going into, or you only have three? So you're in the same place as Jay? I thought you, okay. So Mike and Jay are the newest among this team, but collectively, um, they've got over 150 years of education experience, um, and about half of that is in Summersworth, which is remarkable. <laughs> Then there's four of us that collectively bring only one year of a summer's worth experience. Um, Stephanie Lafreniere is our new director of grants and development. Where is Stephanie right here? Um, about 20 years of experience in the field at the school level, at the district level, at the state level, Department of Education, an expert on Title I um, and grants, and just doing a terrific job this year as we transition from, new, uh, from Back Bay to New View, pitching in on power school and data management in the, in the short term. Leander Corman is our new director of student services, um, close to 20 years experience in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, State Department of Education, um, fully certified as a special education district level administrator. Um, it brings a wealth of experience to her position. Kat Crosby is our new assistant superintendent. Um, this is her 25th year in the education field, most recently as the founding principal of Middleton Elementary School. She and I overlapped in Rochester, myself at the high school, and um, Kat at the elementary uh, school level is going to focus on teaching and learning first and foremost in her new role. Um, 
and my, I bring about 30 years of experience uh, to this as well, and one year of summer's worth experience. So the collectively adding the four of us, I think we're somewhere, I thought I wrote, oh, 200 years. That's 200 years of education experience um, and uh, not quite any more additions to the summer's worth thing, but that's a pretty impressive group. So I thought it'd be nice just for you guys, and it's a pretty neat thing to have, to be in this place after what the district has been through over the last several years, um, to have a lot of core veteran Summersworth people um, and some new blood with some good experience. Um, I think we got a pretty remarkable team. I think Gemma said it pretty well at the retreat, like, oh my goodness, <laughs> what are you guys doing here? But anyway, um, thank you all. Wait. Before they all sit down, can yep. you go over there and we get one photo before? We get a photo, everybody want me over there? Please. Okay. Thank you. That'd be yeah. great. Board, everybody? No. Uh, no, no. We won't have I mean, to come listen. to another board meeting. We're too fancy. We're going to have a lot of space over there. We're yeah, we're good over here. Okay. Okay, you guys like each other. Okay, just really get in there. 200 years. If you angle towards the center, we'll be able to switch. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. That sounds like something I would do. Okay, one, two, three. Three, two, one, higher. One, two, seven, nine, four, two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was good. Everyone looks great, too. Wonderful. Where'd you get those shoes? Are we? I know, you need those to be Superintendent's report. Um, Yes, okay. everybody can go except for Stephanie. Oh, oh yeah, S sorry, they're just, our board chair is politely suggesting you guys should get out of here and go home. Wait, wait, wait. Do, except wait, for the folks wait. that. Can I suspend rules and I just want to say I am so thankful for you all for um, sticking with us and being a part of this school year. Like we could not do any of this without you, and we're very, very thankful. So I'm, I'm very, very thankful for you all. So thank you. Yes. Oh no. That's you know. There, there are no need to suspend rules. That's okay. Okay. We don't have to. Okay. All right. It is wonderful to sit over here and see so many wonderful former colleagues and people. Like it's so great to see you guys. Thank you for everything that you do for staff and students. You're phenomenal from both sides of the picture. Jim, Jim and Steph know they got to hang out <laughs> and Kat and Katie. Thank you, everyone. Moving right along, there's no um, business administrator report this evening. Um, there is a uh, city councilor, no report this evening. Okay. Moving to our committee reports, which we do not have except that will go through our standing committees. Please um, start to schedule your um your committees, at least one or two um, on the books for now, uh, budget and revenue, that, that is I am chair of, building grounds and transportation, um, board member D. St. Croix, educational programs and community outreach, board member um, O'Brien Hart, and a policy com committee, um, board member Brown. Uh, moving to agenda item 5E, eyes on 30 city committee, board liaison, Saldati. Take it away. Hi. Um, yes, yeah, so I have been the Eyes on 30 um, committee, I believe, have met twice since our last board meeting. Um, we are still, I think I mentioned this last time, we are still in the process of updating this sort of giant rubric we got um, from the city when they sort of founded the committee about future goals. Um, for the city. So our process is, is cleaning this up, kind of redefining a few of the uh, ultimate goals or sort of values we have for this rubric. Um, something we're also thinking a lot about is, is um, we're gonna be looking at the former master plan to really sort of fine tooth comb to make sure what has not been sort of uh, included or kept up because um, as Councillor Goodwin noted, there were a lot of things that um, he thinks since the that that was created that have been done 
and to really make sure as we like continue to set goals as a city that we really see what has been done and what still needs to get done. Um, an idea that came up on the council was to start doing sort of a subject matter expert um, bringing in people from the community to actually tell our committee what it is they need, whether it's from various city departments or local community um, leaders to let us know whether it's the library or the police department, what are the issues that they're facing. So that way it's not just our committee's idea of what we think the city needs, um, but really bringing uh, the community into that process as we draft this document that we'll hand off. Um, again, to go back to um, the public comment Mr. Brooks made about communication with the city, this has come up um, every time we've met with the Eyes on 30 committee and that our city doesn't have a staff person whose sole responsibility is sort of communications for the city. And we just had lengthy conversations about what it might look like and how much um, sort of updating to the 21st century there might be if there was a staff person um, whose job it was to take all departments, you know, news, information, ideas, um, events, et cetera, and to really synthesize them into meaningful ways that can um, reach our community where they're at, whether it is a, a printed flyer on a wall or it is a Facebook group or it is an email blast, et cetera. Um, I'm, I've had prior experience working in marketing and so I'm very aware of the necessity for things like that and how every, every person has a preference for how they feel they need to be communicated with. And I think we can as a city do a lot of work to update some of those things for the 21st century so that folks in the community are here, not just to, um, uh, with the grievances, but actually here because they know what we're talking about and they're excited to engage um, and they feel that it is an approachable um, podium. So that's something the committee's really uh, a big uh, goal for the Eyes on 30. Um, one uh, board pertinent thing is we've talked a lot about ways where as we set goals for the city, how we can coordinate with the school district so if we're doing sign making or design, are there ways that can be integrated into curriculum programs or um, with the CTC, if there's things that, the ways that we can not sort of reinvent the wheel or look outside of our community, but how do we, through these goals, actually um, continue to build the relationship we have with the school district? Let me make a suggestion. Yeah. Um, Chair of Educational um, Programs and Community Outreach, I would suggest this be a, um, a, an agenda item on your one of your future meetings to connect that so that will be the pathway to be able to connect the communication the outreach the you know whatever's happening with that I think the committee work is where the work starts you know that is the incubation of a lot of these ideas to be able to give them a so solid foundation and then come to the board so we're these board meetings aren't five hours long but the work has been done it's public minutes they're public meetings and um yeah look forward to that maybe this fall yeah you good is that the end of your report that is all That's all it. right moving to our present well our presentation um this evening for um agenda item 6.1 the gear up program Stephanie and Jim. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So happy to be here. Um, so I'm going to introduce a little bit of kind of where we are uh, with all our programming, preparing students to uh, their career paths or going on to college and all that postgraduate um, programming. And then um, these lovely people are going to talk a little bit more specifically about a new program we have coming up. So first, just wanted to, I know some board members have been here for longer than others, so wanted to make sure that you're familiar with some of the programs we already have. So as you know, everything begins in like preschool and kindergarten when you start talking about what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? What do you, and introducing them to what everybody else around them in the community does. So it all starts there and uh, the teachers um, grow that and develop that the administrators and school counselors, and it gets a little more pointed and, <laughs> and gearing kids up um, as we get to middle school and high school. And obviously in high school, really trying to get them to solidify some plans moving forward. So a couple programs that we have that are at the high school and middle school level, 
Uh, we have Zello, which is X-E-L-L-O. That's an online program for students. They start using that towards the later years of middle school and into high school. So it's an online platform that really tries to tap into their interests and get them to do some goal setting um, and really get them to think about where they're headed. We also have, which I thought we only had that, and then I was talking to Chris, and we were talking about this new program that you're going to hear about, and he was telling me about all these other great opportunities. So we also have Upward Bound, which is, when I was younger, Upward Bound was like a kind of adventure course that you'd go and do, but it's so much more these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Upward Bound is basically um, funded through UNH, and they have somebody that comes and works with about a dozen to 15 students each year. And really, um, it gears towards families who have, would be having a first generation um, going to college. So really looking at families who have not traditionally gone to college and making sure that that opportunity um, is, if it's of interest to students, is available and helping coach them to that end. So that person comes to the school regularly, works with the families and students in that program. We also have Educational Talent Search Program, which identifies um, students who might be coming from slightly disadvantaged backgrounds and um, some economic hardships or um, just not having the traditional resources available. And um, again, kind of looking at the programming for academics, career, financial counseling, it going as far as some of these programs are helping them fill out financial aid packets and things like that. So we have all those resources available. Um, these last two are targeted more um, for certain students, but we have a great opportunity. Um, Jim had called me a couple uh, weeks ago and said, hey, did you hear we've got gear up? We qualified for it. He said uh, that the previous administration at the SAU had heard some about it and engaged in some conversations, and the superintendent um, at the time had given the green light to move ahead on that. So Jim met with the staff that are involved in that, and I'm going to let him share that conversation. Thanks, Stephanie. Excellent setup. <clears throat> uh, Jen was with me for those conversations as well. Uh, so we just want to take an opportunity to let you know about this new program uh, that we'll have in middle school for the next two years called Gear Up. Uh, Gear Up is an acronym for Gaining Early Awareness and Readiness for Undergraduate Programs. Um, an exciting part uh, of this, uh, of this grant, is that it includes an on-site support person, uh, and her name is for our person is Emma Clark, uh, and Emma's title is College and Career Navigator. So Emma will be housed in the building full time from 7.15 to 2.30, and the cost of this support person is zero dollars to the district. Uh, we're gonna treat her just like an SMS staff member, uh, and Emma's current focus is on supporting seventh and eighth grade students, building positive relationships, helping them become college and career ready, and raising an awareness of scholarship opportunities. So Emma's gonna be following this cohort of seventh and eighth grade students um, all through their the rest of their middle school and high school careers, so pretty exciting. Um, you know, just providing support, encouragement, and any assistance with planning for you know life after high school. So for the first few days, um, we're really just having her just be visible in the building, visit classrooms, start to get to know the kids, the teachers, you know, what life is like in Summersworth Middle School um, while learning, you know, the routines of the school. And then she'll also be a support person in the cafeteria for seventh and eighth graders, just kind of making those positive peer, you know, positive student connections. Um, and hopefully she just becomes another person that can be a go-to person for our kids, you know, that they feel is a safe person. Um, and of course, we're, we're just looking forward to all the resources that the Gear Up program is gonna bring to our building. Um, and there are 12 other school districts and 15 middle schools that are also using Gear Up um, around the state. So some of those are Newport, Claremont, Franklin, Berlin, Manchester, Nashua, and Laconia. And we had the opportunity to talk to a couple of them to just connect and, you know, and everybody was like, this is wonderful. It's a wonderful resource. We've really enjoyed it. So we're, we're looking forward to it. Great, thank you. Any questions from the board? All right, uh, board member Wentworth, yep. And then Clark. This sounds absolutely phenomenal. Um, so who applied for it? Like how, how did someone find out about it or? So I think 
it was yeah, Sue yeah. Blair. I think we were targeting. I think it, yeah. they looked at um, districts that had forty percent or higher pre reduced lunch, yep. and they invited um, those districts to apply. Okay, wonderful. Well, congratulations, you guys. I'm really excited, and it's a three year program. So Emma will be there for two three years. years. Two, no. two years. Two years. She's only okay. the first seventh and eighth graders, but then she's going to end up following them as they go to the high school. So she'll end up moving with them and no longer be in the middle school, and then she'll be progress to the high school too. Okay. All right. Awesome. Congratulations. Great. Okay. Thank you. So uh, thank you for that, and thank you for Sue Blair for finding this. Um, so I think scholarships is so important. I don't know if many people know how to find or even write or apply for scholarships for college. So that piece in itself is amazing. Um, the students that are being selected for this, do we have any idea of how that's going to happen? Is it? That was our that was our initial question. So like Emma. When you think about these students who you work with, who are they going to be? How are you going to establish those kids? And right now the answer is the entire cohort. So she ha with our current seventh graders, she'll have seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, and twelfth grade. If that same person is in this role the whole time, that's six years to build relationship, build financial literacy, and then expose everyone to all these um, scholarships. So there's a lot of opportunity there. But her her charge is the entire cohort so it's about 200 students right now yep. okay. but it's 200 students over six years five or six years so there's time to establish relationships and build trust and as part of this she'll be doing some school-wide events or grade level events yep. um you know with everybody so that that time family out outreach. family outreach yeah, yeah. Right, right, yes. And one, sorry, one thing to add. I'm going off script. I told myself I wouldn't. <laughs> to be concise, precise. Um, w one of their big sales was like, this is not, a n nothing is going to be added to a staff member's plate. Nothing is going to be added to an administrator's plate. They are in a supportive role to help our students and not add anything to the school. That's it, great. School building's responsibilities. That's great. I added, when resources. I looked into Emma, she has experience at the college level in admissions um, in that background, so it's to okay. see what that process looks like. Wow. Great. All right, Board Member Brown. Yeah. Sorry to ask the lawyer question, but in the DocuSign document that was part of our packet, it was not signed. So ha are we formally in, to in this agreement now? We are. Okay, thank you. Who was the signature for, for chart? Oh, great. Oh. Perfect. Wonderful. Good luck. This is amazing. Thank you for the work. Uh, welcome Sorry. to Gear Up and Emma. And yeah, away we go. Thank you. I just, one more thing. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I just have one more selfish thing. Can we get a t shirt? The 2425. <laughs> Wish that the answer was yes. Oh, okay. So to grab more to give to some of the other admin. That's that's perfect. That's good. That's okay. That's okay. Those are so nice. Okay. Would you like to make a motion to order <laughs> a dozen more t-shirts? Katie, is that in the? Oh, so Katie says yes. Great. Okay. They look great. They look really great. Wait, I have a. Oh yes. Jim. I just thought of something. Are is she available also for families? Like, if they have questions, can they reach out? Yep. Okay. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Cool. Yeah, we're excited to have her. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you have a great first day. All right. Agenda item number 6.2, Title IX revisions update. Assistant Superintendent Kat Crosby. Thanks. That, that's a hard transition um, to follow after that. But Especially me. They get way harder. Like when students come up oh. and then Kate, I'm always Kate, after Kate, and I'm like, okay. Kate has to, to say that. And yep. it's like all the kids stand So up continue to put her after those. Okay. <laughs> That'll work well for me. And actually, John touched on pretty much what I was going to share. So as of August 1st um, this year, the Title IX regulations have been updated, and there's been several updates. So I've been working this summer to edit the current policy to bring forth to the policy committee to look at. Um, and I've used the NHSBA and DOE reference guides to do that um, because there are a number of changes to the policy. So. When we have our policy committee meeting, I will be bringing that forth to take a look at so that we can make sure our policy is current um, with the new regulations that have come out. All right, great. That'll probably be the ag first agenda item or at the first meeting for policy in September. 
Um, there are no policies this evening. Uh, the new business is agenda item 8.1, our 2026 to 2031 uh, CIP presentation. Um, yeah, Katie, thank you. Yep. So um, there's two documents in your packet. One's just a summary of the changes, and the other one is the um, spreadsheet that we submit to the city. Um, so Jay and I met and um, went over some of the things that we could reduce and things that we wanted to add. So some of the additions, um, replacing or refinishing the gym floors at Idlehurst, um, SAU roof replacement, which is something that's been needed to be done for quite a while, um, high school football field lighting upgrades, and then track, I just want to give them a little more information on that one. It's not a complete full track. It's what we discussed last year. It's a, a runway up with a pit at the end and then another section for like high jump. So it's not a complete track, but it's what we started to discuss last year in buildings and grounds. So I just want to add that little bit <laughs> for clarification. Um, the reductions, um, two items we were able to complete from the last update, um, the SAU 56 HVAC upgrades. You remember the uh, one system failed last year, so we had to replace it last year. The second one we replaced um, in July, so those two have been done. And then the tractor for snow removal, we were able to do that with the year-end funds, so we took care of that as well. Um, ongoing projects that we've kept on the CIP are security upgrades. Even though we've been in the process of completing some security upgrades with the safety grants that we received, we we keep these on there every year because there's always upgrades that we can do for security. So we just keep that there as a placeholder. Um, the process going forward, once the board approves the plan tonight, um, it will be submitted to the city manager tomorrow to be incorporated in the city's plan. And then we'll be presenting to the planning board um, sometime in October. And then the city manager will submit it to council in December for approval for the city. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions for this? For, for this for now it's not approving these purchases just for clarity it's just what goes on the list of what is to um, improvement projects hopefully that we'll address we've done massive work just over the last um, five to seven years I would say we've done um, in the millions millions of things you know we maybe should have a list of that maybe for school board members to see what has been done at some point but for this we we need to um, approve this tonight so I'm going to ask for a motion to suspend rules to um, take action on this ton tonight so a motion to suspend rules I motion to suspend rules yep a second second any discussion about that motion okay now I'm looking for a motion um, to approve the 2026 to 2031 um, capital improvement plan presentation to move um, to the city. I'll make oh. a oh, yeah. I'll make a motion um, to approve for that the board approve the fiscal year 2026 no yep. 2026 to uh, fiscal year 2031 um, project list that's in our packet. Perfect. Do I have a second? I second. Any discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. It's approved. Thank you so much. Wonderful list. No old unfinished business. Future meeting dates though. So this is um, some changes here. Our The September 10th um, meeting has to be changed. It is primary day. Um, yeah. So not going to be in these chambers. Um, hopefully other people will be. Um, so we moved it to September 9th, Monday, September 9th at 7 p.m. City Hall here. Um, and then our September 24th board meet meeting, same, 7 o'clock here, October 15th, um, October 29th, and then a change in November to November 19th. Um, and that will be our sole school board meeting in uh, November, and then we have one meeting in December, and then we kind of go to until um, June. <clears throat> so with that known, yep, board member Brown. I just want to make sure. So mm -hmm. November 12th school board, November 26th school board is now solo on the 19th. Correct. Thank you. Correct. Yep. Correct. So now hopefully that that's all firmed up for our fall, so committee meetings can be scheduled um, as soon as possible now to, in order to ha make some progress to be able to bring it to the full board. First read, second read, and get through. So this is our first meeting. Um, we'll have another one in September. So one, two, three, four, we have five meetings to the end of the year. So how that works. So 
ramping it up for the beginning and then at the end we really don't do as much towards the end of the year um towards the, towards the summer clear okay comments by visitors oh board member Ron, go ahead i'm sorry to ask one more question so when do we start our budget review process and do these changes affect our time in reviewing john and i looked at the budget schedule earlier and it does not affect anything um Typically, the first meeting in November, you're looking at the SAU portion of the budget because we have to give Rollins for the estimate for them. But we'll do that on the 19th, and then you vote on it in December. So we're good budget-wise. OK, thank you for that information. I have one thing to ask. It's, mo it's mostly for Jay. I don't know. Um, with the start of a new school year and the scoreboards for the high school and middle school, um, do we know if all the lights are working? I know it's a little thing, but it matters to the kids when other teams are coming and they see the school board and it's not lit up properly. Do we know if all the lights are working? Good question. So the uh, middle school scoreboard, we got that fixed towards the end of the school year, so that is functional. We'll probably need to give it a good run through to make sure it's good, um, make sure the gremlins didn't get into it over the summer. Um, the high school, that thanks for reminding me, we'll, we'll check, the, check the bulbs. Ironically, we can go up there and replace the bulbs, and the next day they're burnt out again. So that's kind of a constant game of whack-a-mole. Um, that's something we're looking at um, one way or another to, to, to replace those school boards at the high school gym. So Okay. Hopefully I just would love for the students to start the first game and be like, oh, I'm so proud of my school. You know, I mean, have the lights all working. So Absolutely. We, thank we, you. We've gotten quotes for that, so hopefully uh, we can tackle that soon. Thank you. Great. Right. Comments by visitors this evening? Any comments by visitors? I don't believe there is any. Anyone outside? Nope. All right. Comments by board members? Comments? We just raise your hand and, yep, board member Clark, go ahead. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, everyone. Um, I am so excited for the school year. I'm, I'm hopeful for all the students to be excited. Hope they have a great first year. Um, that's it. Thanks. Bye. This is just my first, like, I think, official official school board meeting. Um, so I wanted to say I'm Bridget Jameson. I'm representing Ward 3. I'm happy to serve. Um, and I hope that all the students and staff and families have a wonderful start to school tomorrow. I also, I don't know if we addressed ever that um, Todd is now <laughs> longer here. Because um, I don't think that we've had any official meeting so um no. we will miss the the constant um presence of todd and thank you so much for your many many years of service and um sitting on the side is was super fun and his wisdom and um he always had many things to say um and they were always uh very insightful so um we do will be missed and um i'm really excited for this year so everyone sleep well tonight because tomorrow it begins wonderful all right anyone else any board members yes hopefully for uh board member marsh we'd be um invited at some point because there are certain certain accolades to be given um, at, a, at, a, at a future uh, board meeting date to be invited. I think that like some, sometimes with all everything said and done, it's really like going home. I hope having amazing, safe, healthy, productive, just kind of like one of those uh, school years to be really proud of. Um, there's a lot of talk about being proud um, today at the all district um, meeting um, for staff and there's a lot of speak of that in the community it's really true and I think um, I think our new assistant superintendent um, Crosby mentioned that too so with that you know everyone do what makes you proud do what makes others proud but really what makes you proud and that's what I would ask all of our students and staff and community members of um, you know kind of having that focus for the first day of school and staying safe and being happy and with that under an hour um, do we have it non -public? Non -public, yeah. yep uh, non-public for which we're gonna look for a motion to go in for 91 a 3 2 in which number 
Okay. Is it um which which number should we put in? Is that number J? Really separate. Oh, okay. K. Okay. Does it fall under K? Yeah, it falls under K. So looking for a motion to go into non-public per 91A32K, which is... I make a motion to go into non-public for 91-AK. A32K. A32K. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, can I have a roll call, please? Thank you. Maggie Larson. Yes. Carrie Clark. Yes. Sarah Brian Hart. Yes. Crystal D. St. Croix. Marsha Brown? Yes. Barbara Wentworth? Yes. Bridget Jameson? Yes. Gemma Soldati? Yes. 